Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's take a look at a scripture here in Micah chapter 5. This scripture is used to deceive a lot of people. Sadly, the people who use this scripture to deceive do not know what they're talking about, or maybe some do, and they intentionally, willfully are deceiving others in order to support false doctrine. Now, the people who use this scripture here use it to suppose that there are additional deities other than God the Father. And these additional deities existed alongside the Father from everlasting. Well, let's just go ahead and read the verse. But before we do that, I think it's a good idea for us to go to Micah chapter 1 to just get an understanding of how this word of God came about. Micah 1, 1, the word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morashite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. So the word of the Lord is coming to Micah, and he's seen things that are concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Now he's going to see these things via a vision or under a type of meditation with the Lord. That is how he's beginning to see these things that shall come to pass. Now let's go back to Micah chapter 5. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So he will come forth. And the he, that is, the ruler of Israel, is none other than Jesus Christ, the Messiah. But the false teachers like to use this part of the verse, as I stated in the beginning, to suppose that there are additional deities that have always existed alongside the Father. Three personalities, three persons, three deities, each one distinct. And because it says, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting, they come to that conclusion. But what does this truly mean? Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Now, if you are part of this ministry, and if you've been with us for some time, you will know that we like to use the Word of God as we explain the Word of God. We don't have additional commentaries here. We don't have a book library. We don't have a, a shelf of commentators to reference to explain to you Micah 5 2. But what we have is the Holy Writ, the Word of God. And essentially, that's all we need. That's all we need is the Word of God. So how do we do this? How do we harmonize the Word of God? Well, what does it mean to harmonize something? What is harmony? Harmony is unison. It's togetherness. It's something that flows accordingly. If you strum a chord and your finger is positioned in the, on the wrong note, there is no harmony there. And there will be a distinct sound that will let the hearer know that something is out of place. So when we harmonize the Word of God, we want to make sure we don't, as what they call, cherry pick or take a scripture totally out of context or out of harmony with the Word of God and use it to formulate a doctrine. And that's what these people do. They take a scripture or part of a scripture and they create a whole new doctrine. Or they try to fortify the false doctrine that they've created out of other scriptures. So we're going to dispel that here today. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. What does this mean? Let's take a look at Revelation 13, 8. 
and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Notice, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now this gives us a little insight here. It tells us about the Lamb that is slain from the foundation of the world. Now go back to the previous scripture whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Now, prior to the foundation of the world, it's safe to say that that is a time of everlasting. Prior to the establishment of the world, or the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was slain from the foundation of the world. Now, how can that be? But let's take it a little further in 1 Peter 1.20. And I believe this is where the light bulb will begin to turn on, if it hasn't already. Now, concerning Jesus Christ, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Now, that's similar uh, phraseology or statement that comes from Revelation from the foundation of the world. And in 1 Peter, he was foreordained. So what we have is the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. And now we see that the lamb or Jesus Christ was foreordained before the foundation of the world. So before God said, let there be light, before he brought the world into existence, verily was Jesus Christ not only slain, but he was foreordained. Let's just quickly go back to Micah 5 2. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting, prior to the foundation of the world. There we see everlasting. First Peter 1.20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Before we get into the second part of this verse, let's hone in on this word here, foreordained. Jesus Christ verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world of the world we go to the strongs we look up the greek word and we see prognostico to know beforehand for no pro ginosco foreknown knowing beforehand Known, foreknew, to know before, to foresee, foreknow, ordained, verily was foreordained, ordained, know before. So what do we see here? We see clearly that the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world and Jesus Christ, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, was already in the plan of God. Now, similar to a writer who begins to write a story, he doesn't just jot down random letters and words on paper randomly and thereby come up with a fine story. No, he doesn't do that. A writer will already have the foresight, the foreknowledge of what he is going to write down on paper. He has a theme. He has something in mind. He has a subject, 
and likewise with God. He foreordained this salvation plan before the foundation of the world who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Notice, but was manifest in these last times for you. For you. Manifest. So we see that Jesus Christ was foreordained or he was in the foresight or the foreknowledge to know to be known beforehand by God he was already planned he was already seen he was already foreknew before the foundation of the world everything was already accomplished the Messiah Jesus Christ was already slain before God said let there be light but he was manifest in these last times for you. What does that mean? A fanaru. To make visible. To make clear. To make known. To show. To appear. Manifestly declare. Manifest forth. Show. Self. And how does this take place, or when did this take place, this manifestation of the foreordained, of that which was foreordained by God? When did that which was fore, foreknown, or known beforehand, or foreordained before the foundation of the world, when did this manifestation take place? Notice in John 1.14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth that is when the manifestation of that which was foreordained by god took place behold you shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. And Mary brought forth her firstborn son, born in a manger, because there was no room for him at the inn. That is when the manifestation for us in these last times took place. The Most High God does not have a going forth from any location. The one born in Bethlehem. The one who comes forth and born of a woman and was prophesied by the prophets to come and be a deliverer and he would save his people from their sins. That one, that son of God, the only begotten of God, he has a goings forth. He has a mission. He has a duty. He must fulfill the will of the Father. He has a goings forth. A place of origin, if you will. And it has been from of old, from everlasting. Prior to the foundation of the world. From the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, he was foreordained. Therefore, his goings forth have been from of old. Now we're beginning to see clearly here. John fourteen twenty eight, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father, this is very important, my Father is greater than I. My Father is greater than I. Now those who try to use Micah 5.2 to try to establish the doctrine of preexistent 
additional deities alongside of the Father God are manipulating you and are lying to you and have not rightly divided the word of truth. From what we have done here is we have established that the goings forth that have been from of old, from everlasting, are on par with the lamb slain from the foundation of the world and he which was verily foreordained before the foundation of the world by God. Pre-knowledge, foreknowledge, foresight, to know before, the mind, the plan of God, similar to a writer before he writes a story. It's coming from God. These aren't additional deities that are existing There is only one God, one deity, and that is God the Father and one Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? The Son of the Highest, the one to be born in Bethlehem, the ruler of Israel, the Redeemer, the salvation plan of God, that one whose blood was shed on our behalf. A spirit can't shed blood flesh and blood that which is corporeal can shed blood God is a spirit the shedding of blood came from Jesus Christ the son of God who was verily foreordained by God before the foundation of the world the plan of salvation was already set it was already accomplished before God said let there be light and if you take it a few verses further here as we close, and that's one that's one of the things these these false teachers do not like to do. They do not like to read context. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. Now, who is the he? Uh, the one born in Bethlehem, the ruler of Israel, the redeemer of mankind, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of of the name of the Lord, his God. His God. So brothers and sisters, when they bring to you a verse like this to try to establish a man-made doctrine, make sure you harmonize the word of God, which we have done so today. We do not only take a scripture and run with it, but we make sure it's within the chord, in accord, in harmony, in sync with the totality of the word of God, with the theme of the scriptures, with the salvation plan of God, Jesus Christ. You won't be tricked so easily. You won't be duped if you will just study the word of God for what it says. And let me just remind you, all I have in front of me are the pages of the word of God, the Bible. Within this room here, I don't have any commentaries. I threw those out years ago when they got in the way of the word of God. And I suggest you to do the same. I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you. Until next time, by God's grace we meet again. Go in peace, in Jesus' name. Amen.